viewers welcome to this lecture on the controllability and observability of uh, the continuous control systems. So, in this lecture we will see some results on the controllability and observability uh, of the given system and the corresponding canonical form system. So, uh, so let us uh, first recall some simple results from the linear algebra. So, uh, if P of t is a matrix n cross n matrix with rows r 1, r 2, r n as functions of t and m is a constant matrix given by integral t 0 to capital T P of t into P dash t. So, this is also a n cross n matrix and then the rows of the matrix P of t are linearly independent if and only if the matrix M has rank n or uh, in other words the matrix M is non-singular. So, here the each row is a function of t. So, here we say that the rows of the matrix as functions of t are linearly independent and here the constant matrix is non-singular M capital M is constant matrix. So, the relation between P of t and M is given by this expression. So, the proof is uh, uh, like this if M is a singular matrix then we can find a vector alpha in R n so that uh, alpha is non-zero and alpha dashed M alpha is equal to 0. It is a standard result and so that implies by substituting the definition of M uh, that is integral T 0 to capital T P of T into P dash T gives uh, the M definition and then we multiply pre multiply with alpha dashed and post multiply with alpha. So, that is equal to 0. But this is nothing but norm of alpha dashed into P of T square d t equal to 0 and the integral of the positive quantity is 0 it implies that function inside uh, the integral alpha dashed into p of t is equal to 0 for all t. So, this implies the rows of uh, the matrix p of t are linearly independent because uh, alpha if you write alpha dashed to be alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n a row vector and if you multiply the matrix P of t, P of t is first row is R 1 of t, second row is R 2 of t etcetera. So, if you multiply alpha dashed into P of t we get uh, this expression alpha 1 into the first row plus alpha 2 into second row etcetera equal to 0 for all t value and here alpha is a non-zero vector. So, some of the alpha i's will be non-zero. So, this implies that the rows of P of t are linearly dependent here. So, if m is singular the rows of uh, P of t are linearly dependent and similarly uh, we can go back if the rows are linearly dependent for P of t then we can uh, in the, the reverse order if we reach then we will conclude that alpha dashed into m into alpha equal to 0 that implies m itself is singular. So, it proves the theorem that if m is non-singular then the rows of P of t also should be linearly independent vice versa if rows of P of t are linearly independent then m is non-singular. So, this result follows. Now, we uh, use that result for the controllability problem. So, if we consider the system x dot equal to a x plus b u uh, where a is n cross n matrix b is n cross m matrix then uh, the condition four conditions are equivalent four uh, statements. So, the system is controllable and the second one is the rank of b a b a square b etcetera a n minus 1 b the rank e equal to n. So, this we have already proved the equivalence of 1 and 2 has been already proved. Then the controllability also uh, for, for this uh, constant matrix case if a and b are constant matrix we have also proved that the matrix 0 t 0 to t of phi t t 0 
phi t0 minus t into b b dash e a t0 minus t dash into dt. So, this is non singular we have shown that this controllability gramian is non singular. So, now we can easily prove that the second implies third because two implies this matrix is non singular. Now, if you take e to the power a t, t naught minus t into b as the p of t matrix, we can assume that p of t is e to the power a t naught minus t into b. Then we can show that the if, if this matrix m is non singular previously we have proved in the previous theorem that p of t is non singular uh, the, the rows of p of t is uh, are non uh, are linearly independent then the matrix m is non singular and vice versa so by taking p of t to be e to the power a t not minus t into b uh, we can show that the rows of uh, e to the power a t into b are linearly independent because e to the power a into t naught is a constant matrix which can be which is non singular. So, we can prove uh, 2 implies 3. Now, 3 implies 4 also can be proved in the following way. So, now if we take uh, this theorem let us assume that p of t is r 1 of t r 2 t r and t as earlier then the Laplace transform of this matrix p of t we denote it by p bar of s where s is the the Laplace transform variable from t variable is transformed to the s variable here and p bar of s is the Laplace transform of p of t. So, if you assume that the rows of p of t are linearly independent then the rows of p bar s are also linearly independent and vice versa that can be shown because the Laplace transform is a linear operator. So, uh, first if you assume p of t has linearly independent rows then there exists a alpha non-zero vector such that alpha dashed into p of t equal to 0 for all t. Then by taking Laplace transform of alpha dashed into p of t uh, that will be equal to 0 uh, that implies that because alpha dashed is a constant vector alpha dashed into p bar of s is also equal to 0. So, this implies that the rows of p bar s are also linearly independent. So, similarly the inverse Laplace transform is a linear operator. So, we can easily prove in the reverse way if rows of p bar s are linearly dependent we can show that the rows of p of t are also linearly dependent. So, we proved if rows of p of t are linearly independent then the rows of p bar of s are also linearly independent. So, using that result we can prove that the condition uh, the, the statement 3 implies the statement 4 and uh, statement 4 implies the statement 3 both can be proved by taking p of t equal to e to the power a t into b in the previous two theorems we can easily prove the statement 1 we have proved here the statement 2 implies the statement 3 and now we can prove the statement 3 implies the statement 4 by taking simply the Laplace transform of e power a t into b. So, it will be nothing but s i minus a inverse b the Laplace transform. So, if the rows of e power a t into b are linearly independent then the rows of the uh, s i minus a inverse b are also linearly independent. So, this proves the result. So, in order to prove the controllability of the system x dot equal to a x plus b u, we can prove a, any one of the statements either 2, 3 or 4, it will automatically imply the controllability. Now, we will uh, prove some result for the 
Jordan canonical form. So, if A is a matrix whose Jordan canonical form is uh, denoted by J, then there exists a non singular matrix P such that P inverse A P is the Jordan form J. So, now let us assume that P inverse B is the matrix D and now the control system x dot equal to A x plus B u the system is controllable if and only if the system z dot equal to j z plus d u is controllable, where the uh, transformed variable z is related with x by z equal to p inverse of x. So, if x is the state variable original state variable then the transformed state variable is z here which is related by z equal to p inverse of x and uh, the A matrix is transformed to the J matrix and B is transformed to D where D is P inverse B here. So, so the controllability of the system x dot equal to x plus B u is equivalent to the controllability of the canonical system z dot equal to J z plus D u. So, that can be easily proved by uh, the controllability of x dot equal to x plus b u condition is the rank of b a b a square b a power n minus 1 b is n. Now, a this matrix b can be written as p into d and a can be written as p j p inverse. So, by substituting in the place of b we get p d in the place of a b we get p j into d etcetera a power n minus 1 b we get uh, p j power n minus 1 into d. So, the rank of this is same as the rank of d j d j power n minus 1 d because we can take this out from here this is equal to this one is the rank of the matrix p into d j d etcetera. Because p is the non singular matrix, so it, it can be written like this and the rank of uh, this matrix will be same as the rank of d j d j power n minus 1 d. So, uh, if uh, the, the a b system is controllable, then the j d system is also controllable from this expression. Similarly, we can go in the reverse order if uh, rank of d j d j power n minus 1 d is n then by multiplying with p matrix we can conclude that the rank of b a b a square b etcetera that is also n. So, uh, in both the ways we can show the controllability of the given system is equivalent to the controllability of the canonical system. So, now we will uh, prove a useful result only in the form of the Jordan canonical form because we have already shown that the uh, controllability of the given system and the Jordan canonical system both are equivalent. So, if we prove the result for the Jordan canonical form then it, it will be the it will be applicable to the given system x dot equal to a x plus b u also. So, instead of the a matrix let us assume it is canonical form j. So, j is a n cross n matrix in which we have the Jordan blocks given like this j 1, j 2 and j k. So, here the Eigen values are lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k these are the k distinct Eigen values and for each Eigen value there is a Jordan canonical block. For the ith Eigen value lambda i we get j i is the uh, ith canonic uh, the Jordan block. So, the Jordan block j i is given by j i 1, j i 2 etcetera, j i r i. So, uh, this 
j lambda i has geometric multiplicity geometric multiplicity r i. That means, uh, for the Eigen value lambda i, there are r i linearly independent Eigen vectors available, but the algebraic multiplicity of uh, algebraic multiplicity that is given by n i. Okay. So, in the characteristic polynomial the root lambda i is repeated n i n suffix i times, but it has uh, r suffix i linearly independent Eigen vectors. So, it will have r i Jordan blocks like this. Now, for each j this j i j capital J the Jordan form i suffix small j it is a n i j cross n i j matrix. So, the Jordan block for that Eigen value uh, the j Jordan block will look like this lambda i 1 0 0 0, 0 lambda i 1 0 etcetera. Uh, the off diagonal elements are 1 here and so this uh, is repeated n i j times the, this uh, the size of the block is this one. Now, the matrix corresponding to B it can be split into B 1, B 2 etcetera whatever is the number of Eigen values that is uh, we have taken k j 1, j 2, j k. So, correspondingly we have to divide this B matrix into that much form. So, it should be B k and for each i the B i block the B i block is having B i 1 is one block B i 2 is the second block and B i r i is the last block of this. So, corresponding to Jordan canonical form we can split the B matrix in this form and then for each B i j we can write the matrix in this form. So, this superfix i j represent it is corresponding to the matrix B i j. So, B superfix i j and it has the rows B 1 is the first row B 2 is the second row and B suffix n i j is the last row of the matrix B i j. Now, we take uh, the new matrix it is called B superfix i a matrix which we define it is like this for each block here B i 1, B i 2, B i r i the last row looks like this. For example, for B i 1 the last row is small b i 1 small b i j by n j 1. So, the matrix B i j is written as B i j 1 is the first row B i j 2 is the second row B i j n i j is the last row of the matrix B i j. Now, we collect the last row of each such matrix that is B superfix i is the matrix defined as follows. So, from the matrix B i 1 the last row of B i 1 is given by B i 1 as superfix and n i 1 that is the last row like this. And when we take the second block B i 2 here its uh, last row is B i 2 and the last element the row is given by n i 2 this one. So, in the place of j if you put 1, 2, 3 etcetera we will get all the rows of B superfix i. So, it is B i 1 n i 1 is the first row B i 2 n i 2 is the second row and B i r i and n suffix i r i is the last row of the matrix B superfix i. So, that means, it is the last row of each such block this last row is collected for each j we get 
this one. So, now the result is as follows. If the rows of this B superfix i, if they are linearly independent, this is a constant matrix and there are R i rows here, i n i 1. So, here we see that 1, 2 up to R i rows. So, if this R suffix i rows are linearly independent, then we say that the system is controllable that is the theorem to be proved. So, here we consider the system x dot equal to j x plus b u, where b is a matrix uh, we can consider it is a n cross n matrix and it is n cross m matrix, b is a n cross m matrix, u is uh, m cross 1. So, we know that the system is controllable if S i minus j inverse b is linearly independent, if the rows of this matrix are linearly independent that was the theorem proved earlier. So, uh, we see under what condition this uh, rows of S i minus j inverse b are linearly independent. So, S i minus j inverse can be written like this because it has Jordan blocks j 1, j 2, j k. So, other blocks are 0 blocks here we can write they are all 0 depending on the size uh, we have to write the blocks here. Okay. And B has blocks B 1, B 2 the as we have seen earlier B k. Now, we have to uh, see the if the rows of S i minus j inverse B are linearly independent then the system is controllable. So, we will see under what condition the rows of S i minus j inverse b are linearly independent. So, if you multiply S i minus j inverse into the b matrix, we get this expression as given here S i minus j here i is the identity matrix n cross n identity matrix S is a a variable real variable and uh, so we can write it like this by multiplying these two matrices. Now, each block S i minus j i inverse into B i. So, if you take this one it can also be written in the similar form only thing is for each i we take the corresponding blocks i j i 1 j i 2 j i n suffix i are taken these blocks and similarly b i 1, b i 2, b i r i. So, here s i minus j i suffix i r i is the not n i there is a correction here. Now, we take one such block s i minus j i j which is n i j cross n i j size matrix which can be written in this particular way because the eigenvalues are lambda i for this and they are repeated n i j times and so s i minus j i j is given by this matrix. Now, it is inverse if you directly calculate we can find the inverse of the matrix s i minus j i j inverse is given by this expression. Now, if you multiply with the matrix B i j with the inverse, we will get the following S i minus j i inverse B i, it has n i cross m rows and that can be written like this. The product directly will give this expression. 1 by S i S minus lambda i into B i 1 suffix 1 plus 1 by S minus lambda i square B i 1 suffix 2 etcetera. So, note that these are all row vectors okay. B i 1 
1 b i 1 2 b i 1 n i 1. So, these are all row vectors and the 1 by s minus lambda i etcetera these are functions of s here. So, by adding all these terms we will get a vector function in s variable. The second vector is also the linear combination of these vectors and it is a function of s. So, uh, the last one is the vector b i 1 and n i 1 vector multiplied by 1 by s minus lambda i. So, uh, so this expression we get from this from the previous slide we multiply the last row with the matrix we get this expression. I think here the correction is this one there is no power here the powers will be in decreasing. The first term is uh, s 1 by s minus lambda i the last term here is 1 by s minus lambda i power n i j. But so here the first block will have the last term 1 by s minus lambda i only multiplied by this row vector. Similarly, the second block if we take the last row of this second block is given by 1 by s minus lambda i multiplied by b i 2 suffix n i 2 and the last is last block is 1 by s minus lambda i multiplied by the row b i r i suffix n i r i block. So, this is the matrix uh, which is of the size because this is of the size n i cross n i and this is of the size n i cross m. So, this is of the size n i cross m matrix. Now, we can see that these last rows of each block is made up of the rows of B superfix I matrix. So, this matrix we have seen this B superfix I matrix uh, have these particular rows as given. So, we have this matrix the last rows like this. So, if we observe that if these rows B I 1 n suffix n I 1 B I 2 suffix n I 2 and B i r i suffix n i r i if they are linearly independent then all the rows of s i minus j suffix i inverse into b i are linearly independent. So, this matrix is what, what is given in the previous. So, this is the matrix. So, if this rows are linearly independent then automatically all the rows of this matrix are linearly independent because we can see that uh, none of the rows can be written as product of any of these rows. But if any of these rows the last row of the each block they become 0 then obviously if any one of the row is 0 in a matrix that matrix has linearly dependent row. So, first thing is they should not be non they should be non zero these uh, rows b uh, i 1 suffix n i 1 b i 2 suffix n i 2. So, these rows should be first of all non zero then if uh, if they are also linearly independent then the entire matrix n i cross m matrix they are all linearly independent and if any of them become 0 then we can see that the entire matrix has 0 uh, uh, the linearly dependent rows. And the condition similarly if for each i s i minus j i inverse b i are linearly independent then the total the entire matrix S i minus j inverse b are also linearly independent. So, that can be seen from here S i minus j inverse b is given by this one. So, if the blocks each for each i 
the rows of each blocks are linearly independent and since the j1 j2 they are all made up of different eigen values the first block is made up of eigen value lambda 1 and second block uh, we will have si minus lambda sorry si minus j suffix i inverse so this will contain the element like s 1 by s minus lambda i or its powers plus etc so here we can see that each block contains different types of uh, terms like 1 by s minus lambda 1 will be coming in the first block 1 by s minus lambda 2 will come in the second block and its powers etc so none of them can be linearly dependent on any of these blocks because of the nature of the different eigen values so if separately if they have linearly independent rows then the total rows every row is linearly independent the set of all rows of this matrix are linearly independent so that is what is given here for each i if si minus j suffix i inverse into b i are linearly independent then si minus j inverse into b also will have linearly independent rows and this implies the controllability of the system so uh, the condition for controllability is given by this matrix ultimately this b superfix i matrix is a important one if the rows of this matrix are linearly independent then this given system is controllable the, the system x dot equal to j x plus b u is controllable and if the jordan system is linearly independent then the original system will also be linearly independent by the previous theorem so here we have seen the relation between the jordan canonical form of a system and the system itself how they are related by the controllability property so now we have shown that the system is controllable the system x i x dot equal to j x plus b u is controllable if the rows of the rows of the b superfix i are linearly independent so this is what we have shown so now we will see an example in the following way so let us consider the jordan canonical form like this j1 and j2 okay so where j1 is having j11 and j12 and j2 is j21 j22 so uh, in the previous notation as we have seen so where j11 matrix is 2 1 0 0 2 1 0 0 2 and j 1 2 is simply the 1 cross 1 matrix 2 and j 2 1 is let us say 3 1 0 3 okay. and j 2 2 is the matrix 3 so the total size of this matrix j is 4 6 7 so it is a 7 cross 7 matrix and j1 it is 4 cross 4 matrix and j2 is 3 cross 
3 matrix and the corresponding matrices are given here. So, we can uh, divide now the matrix B into 4 parts, it will contain uh, first it is B1, B2 corresponding to J1, J2 we have B1, B2 and B1 has 2 blocks B11, B12 and B2 have 2 blocks B21, B22. Now, <coughs> the matrix corresponding to the eigenvalues. So, you can easily see that the eigenvalues are lambda 1 is 2 and lambda 2 is 3 and it is uh, geometric multiplicity is 2 for each one of them. Algebraic multiplicity of uh, lambda 1 is it is repeated 4 times. Algebraic multiplicity is 4, but geometric multiplicity is 2 here and for lambda 2 algebraic multiplicity is 3 and geometric multiplicity is 2, the 2 linearly independent eigenvectors will be there. Now, uh, so this, this will have 4 blocks, the matrix B finally has 4 blocks that is B11, B12, B21, B22. So, according to the theorem, this theorem statement we have seen that. So, this matrix B superfix i for each eigen value lambda i, the last row of this blocks corresponding to that B i, whatever is the last row of each block, they are linearly independent, then the system is controllable. So, if you have this following example, this example for B1 we have 2 blocks. So, the last row of each block should be linearly independent, the collection of the last row. So, for example, if you take B1, there are 2 blocks. So, it will have first row and second row. The first row is the last row of B11 and the second row is the last row of B12. Similarly, B superfix 2, it means the last row of B21 will be taken and the last row of B22 is taken. So, it is a matrix with 2 rows. So, for example, if you take 2 rows with 2 columns, we can say that the two rows can be linearly independent. So, the theorem is for each i, B superfix i has linearly independent rows. So, minimum row we required here is number of rows we require is 2 because there are 2 blocks. So, uh, the matrix B should be of the size, B should be of the size, uh, it, it should have at least 2 columns. So, it, it will be 7 cross 2 at least. So, for this example, if you take a matrix B as a column matrix simply, that is 7 cross 1 matrix, then the system will not be controllable. That is clear because of this Jordan canonical forms and the theorem that B superfix I uh, should be having linearly independent rows. So, uh, we can see that if you select 2 rows linearly independent for B superfix 1 and B superfix 2, we can uh, assure the controllability of the uh, system given by this exam, this example with this Jordan canonical form. So, this in this lecture we have seen various results on the controllability of the system and it is related Jordan canonical form. So, similar result can be extended for the observability of the system also. Thank you.